Okay then, so for today's setup guide, we are checking out Emulation Station and how to play Amiga games in this. So for this setup guide, I'm going to be using RetroArch and how to install RetroArch and incorporate it into Emulation Station Desktop Edition. I'm going to be discussing file extension types for your Amiga games and also giving you some crucial advice on Kickstart ROMs. I'm also going to be going through video settings and how to load and save states in your Amiga games. So this is pretty much a comprehensive guide for Amiga in Emulation Station. Check this one out. Okay, before I start today's Emulation Station Desktop Edition setup guide in adding Amiga, make sure to hit notification, subscribe and like if you like today's setup guide. It helps my channel a great deal, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content which I upload every day. So we're looking at the easiest possible way today to get Amiga up and running within Emulation Station. So we need a few things. So what we're going to do is just head over to download Emulation Station Desktop Edition. If you don't have this already, I'll leave the link in my description and I'll also pin it in the comments section. I did a full setup guide on this a little while back, so that should sort you out. Next thing we're gonna do is actually take a look what type of files we need for Amiga within Emulation Station and RetroWatch, which is what we're gonna be using. So we're gonna be using PUAE, and by far this is the easiest way to get you playing Amiga games within Emulation Station and RetroArch. So if we just scroll down, we're going to find under floppies, these file extensions are accepted. So we've got the co most common one here, which is .adf. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we're going to find that it also supports WHD load. Now, the good thing about WHD load is that we don't need to keep swapping disks. And as we know, Amiga games was notorious for asking you to swap disks around. So I recommend getting WHD load games. And I've got one already, and it's in the .lha file extension. If we scroll down a little bit further, we're going to come across BIOSes. Now, these are kickstarts, and this is all the kickstart files that we need for PUAE to work within RetroArch and Emulation Station. So, we need kickstart ROMs. What I suggest doing is going over to Amiga Forever, and you can actually buy these legally. And Amiga Forever is a great setup anyway. I actually covered this a little while back. But anyways, if you buy Amiga Forever, you do get all the Kickstart ROMs and they're legit. So it's very good stuff. So now we know what we're looking for file-wise and your Kickstart or BIOS-wise, what we're going to do is actually download RetroArch. So we're going to go to the RetroArch website, download. And if we just scroll down, I'm actually going to download a portable version of this. Now, I'm going to download the 64-bit. You've also got option here for 32-bit. If you're not sure which one to go for, what this is asking you for is the type of computer that you're running. So if you just go to your search and just type in system information, under system type, it should tell you just here what type of computer you're running. So as we can see, I've got a time 64-bit base PC. So I'm going to download the 64-bit portable version of RetroArch and just let this download. Okay, so I've downloaded RetroArch and what I need to do first is just extract this. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm using WinRAR. You might be using something similar like WinZip, but just extract the RetroArch zip folder. And as we can see, this is now extracting RetroArch. So just let this extract itself. It should take a couple of minutes. And while this is extracting, here's my game I'm going to be using in this setup guide. And as I said just now, I'm using a .lha file extension game, which is a WHD loads game. I've also got my Kickstart ROMs in place. Now, I haven't used all of my Kickstart ROMs, but I'm using the most crucial ones just here. But if you want to use all of them, like the RetroWatch Wiki said so, then just go ahead and use all of them. But for this particular case, these are going to work just fine for my AlienBreeze.LHA game. So what we're going to do next while this is extracting, if we go to the Emulation Station folder, I'm going to go to ROMs and from ROMs I'm going to go into the Amiga folder 
And here, I'm gonna just drag my alienbreeds.lha game inside of that folder. Just close that down for now. RetroArch has now extracted. So I can delete that zip folder. Now, first of all, I need to go into RetroArch and I need to download PUAE. So if I just scroll down, I'm gonna find RetroArch.exe. Let's open this one up. Connected, I've got my Xbox Series X controller connected through Bluetooth and it works just fine. I've not need to set this up. It's automatically detected it in RetroArch. So first thing I suggest doing is making this into a full screen mode. So go to settings, we're gonna to go to video and we're gonna to go to full screen mode and start in full screen mode, enable this. And there we are. So when we open this up through emulation station, it should then open up in full screen mode rather than very annoying window mode. So I'm gonna press B to go back and back again. Now, if I go to main menu, I'm gonna to go to online updater. And from here, I can then download the retro arch Amiga core, PUA core. So I'm gonna to go to core downloader, press A. And from here, I just need to scroll down until I find Commodore Amiga. And here we go. So we've got two versions. We've got PUAE and we've also got PUAE 2021. I'm going to download both. So I'm going to press A on my controller, core installed and PUAE 2021 installed. And if I press B to come out of here, I'm going to go down to configuration file. And from here, I'm going to go to save current configuration and press A on that. So those settings are now saved and I'm gonna just go down to quit RetroArch and press A. Okay, next thing we need to do is actually add these kickstart ROMs. So again, I'm gonna go into the RetroArch folder and from here, I'm gonna to go to system and this is where these kickstart ROMs are gonna be placed. So I'm gonna copy and paste or just drag these into that system folder and this is where your BIOS files go inside of RetroArch in the system folder. Okay, so finally what we're going to do is just open up emulation station folder again and go inside the emulators folder. And what we're going to do is drag that RetroArch portable folder inside of that emulators folder. And that's it. So what we're going to do next is actually open up emulation station by double left clicking on emulationstation.exe. And here we go. You should now see Amiga appear. And as we know, I've just added the one game, which is Alien Breed. Now I've already got the artwork for this, but to do this, what you need to do is just go to Scraper, main menu by pressing start on your controller. And what you need to do is go down to Scrape these systems and just make sure Commodore Amiga is checked. Press back. And if you go down to start, this will then scrape Alien Breed. Now, if you're finding that games aren't scraping, it's quite likely that you need to edit your game file name. For example, just a minute ago, Alien Breed, the version I've got, had lots of letters and numbers after it, and so I edited it. So let's just stop that from scraping because I've already got it. And what we need to do is press select on the game that you need to edit. Edit this game's metadata. And if you go to name by pressing A, from here, you can use the virtual keyboard to configure or edit the game title. And then what you need to do is go down to save and apply. And from there, you can then attempt to rescrape the artwork in preview video for your game. Whilst we're here, what we need to do, other settings, alternative emulators. And as we can see under Commodore Amiga, by default, PUAE is going to be used. We've also got the option here for PUAE 2021 as a backup in case regular PUA doesn't work. But let's actually open up Alien Breed and see if this is working.
So as you can see, that's working perfectly. Now, we can actually make this look different. We can enhance it and do what we want with it. And I'm pressing my Xbox button on my Xbox controller to access the RetroArch Quick Menu. From here, I can just go down using my D-pad or left analog stick to core options. If I go to video, I can then play around with video settings. So for example, I've got resolution settings just here. I can go to super high. If I come out by pressing B, and B again, quick menu, resume. And by pressing Xbox button again, this is going to bring me back into the quick menu. So if I press B to come out, if I go to settings and just go down to video, I can then go to scaling, turn integer scale on. And as you can see from the image in the background of Alien Breed, it's slightly decreased in size. And what this is doing is just taking away some pixelation, just condensing, compressing the image, as it were. If we go to integral scale, overscale, turn this on, we then get a bigger screen. But if you're going to use this one, you really need to turn integral scale off. Other things we got here is aspect ratio. Now it says core provided, which gives us the original 4x3 look of an Amiga game. We can set this to full, just go press A. But it's gonna look slightly stretched as you can see in the background. Let's check this out. Quick menu and resume. And as you can see, by putting that to full, it does look very stretched. So it's just a case of going to your scaling option here and under aspect ratio, just playing around with the setting you like most. Uh, like I say, and as you likely know, if you're watching this for an Amiga game, uh, these games were designed for four by three ratios. Uh, we also got bilinear filter. And if we turn this on, go back into the game. So lots to do just there. Now under quick menu, if you find a particular video setting looks good for a particular game, we can actually save it so we don't have to keep doing this every time we launch a game through Emulation Station. If we go down to core options, from here what we need to do is manage core options. You've got save game options and you've got save content directory options. Now, save game options, which I've got highlighted, it's going to save those video configurations for this particular game. If you go down to save content directory options, it's going to save those video settings for every Amiga game that I launch using PUAE. Now, let's say, for example, you've got ADF files for your Amiga games and it asks you to swap disks over like Amiga games do. Under quick menu, you can go to disk control and from here, you've got the option to load your new disk, disk 2, for example. Under quick menu, we've also got save and load states. If I go to save states, state slot, I've got around a thousand different save slots just here. Now, I'm going to use zero. Now, if I go to save state, I'm then going to press Xbox button, load state. And that's it for today's Emulation Station Desktop Edition Setup Guide for Amiga PUAE. Uh, like I said at the start of the video, if you enjoyed what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content that I release every day on my channel, Just Jamie. Also feel free to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro. <laughs>